Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast. Here is your host, Certified Language Coach, Tamara Marín. Hola, bienvenidos al episodio 198. Welcome to episode 198 of the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast. I am super excited about this episode because I want to touch on a topic that I get asked about a lot. People are really confused about Spanish grammar, but in particular, the past tense. It seems like in English, we only have a few ways of talking about the past, but in Spanish, there are so many different verb conjugations related to the past tense. And this is something that people just mix up. And I think there's a lot of anxiety around wanting to make sure that you're not using the wrong verb form. But in this episode, I'm going to try to make it easy for you. We're going to be reviewing one of the easiest past tense uh, verbs or past tenses in Spanish to actually commit to memory and be able to start using right away. Now, this is important because a lot of times it can be difficult to know which one to use, but I find that as long as you pick one, even if it's not perfect, uh, the person will understand you and you can work on tweaking your grammar and perfecting it later. But this could get you through a conversation if you're in a pinch and you don't know what verb to use. So I'm going to be breaking down this particular past tense. And I'm also going to give you an opportunity if you stay tuned uh, to the end of the episode that if you really want to master the past tense in Spanish, you want to know the difference between um, all the different tenses, when to use them, when not to use them, how to conjugate them and use them in conversation. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the episode. I have a special opportunity for you that's coming up very, very shortly. Okay, but before we get to that, I wanted to let you know that we are going to be trying something different in this episode. We're going to be playing for you a song that actually has uh, the use of this verb in, uh, or I'm sorry, of this verb tense. I keep saying verb. <laughs> Of this verb tense so that you can get used to hearing it and you can start to pick up the pattern so i'm going to play it at the beginning of the episode then i'm going to break down the verb tense in a little bit more detail and then i'm going to play the song for you again at the end now this isn't a real song this is a song that we just created for the purposes of illustrating this concept but i hope that you like it um, i think it sounds pretty authentic but uh, if you google the song it doesn't exist in the real world okay so let's go ahead and get started with the song if you're watching this on youtube you'll be able to also follow along with the lyrics but if you're just listening to the podcast pay attention to uh, common patterns or things that you hear repeated so that we can start to pick up on um, hearing the language spoken and really understanding the context in which it's being used so let's take a listen and then i'll come back and we will dive deeper into what is this past tense verb tense <laughs> that's so easy to use and how you can start using it in your conversations. Ay, es que te soy cristiano, saltaba y reía, mi corazón cantando, por si me hizo sincero. Pasaba con una alegría, mi corazón cantando, I used to jump and laugh, my heart singing. Con compartía momentos con amigos sinceros, I used to share moments with true con alegría sin motivo y sin dinero I used to sing with joys and without money sin preocupaciones llenas se llamaba despierta bajo las estrellas brillantes caminaba las calles sin rumbo sin distantes I used to walk the streets in my sleep without distances
So I hope you enjoyed that short song. And I wonder if you were able to pick up some of the words. Now, if you're listening to this, hopefully you noticed that some of the lines were actually translated in English after. So if you were struggling to keep up with it, you were able to hear the meaning of it in English repeated right after. But the tense that I hope that you're able to pick up if you are an intermediate level learner, but if you're a beginner, maybe you didn't catch it. But the verb tense that was used throughout the song was the imperfect past tense or el imperfecto. Now, I find it interesting that most people don't learn about this until much later or they're much more advanced with Spanish. But to me, it's really one of the easiest forms to learn because it doesn't have that many irregular verbs. Uh, it also is fairly easy to learn the ending. And once you master it, you can really use it even if you should be using a different past tense. So, for example, you have el preterito indefinido or the preterite past tense. That's the one I think most people are familiar with. It's also one of the most challenging because it has so many irregular verbs and different conjugations you have to remember for each subject, uh, yo, tú, usted, etc. So that one can be pretty difficult, and that's the one most people think about. There's also the uh, pre the present perfect tense, which is it's funny it's called present perfect because it actually is referring to uh, something that happened in the recent past. But generally, I found that, um, like in Spain, um, they tend to use the present perfect in place of el preterito indefinido. Uh, and the present perfect is really just saying that I have done something, right? So it's like, uh, if I wanted to say I have been somewhere, I would say he estado allí, right? I've been there. So that is the perfect tense. And then like the uh, preterito indefinido, which you're probably more familiar with, is something like uh, yo fui al parque, I went to the park. So we're talking about something in the past tense and that was actually the verb ir, to go. And as you can hear, it's very irregular because I said yo fui, so I went, is a very irregular uh, conjugation for that verb. So those are the two that are probably the most common. However, a conversation hack you can use is just substitute el imperfecto if you don't really know uh, the other verb conjugations. So it's actually really easy to learn. El imperfecto, or the imperfect past tense, is really just used in certain circumstances. And I'm going to break down some of the examples used in the song, then I'll explain some of the patterns, and you'll see how silly easy it is <laughs> to conjugate this verb. So I encourage you to use it, even if someone goes, oh wow, they're conjugating that incorrectly, they'll understand that you're talking about the past. So it's used for several different things. Like I said, I'll go into more detail later if you want to learn more, more in depth about when to use each of these tenses. But in particular, one of the most common uses of the imperfect or imperfecto is when you're talking about something that you used to do. So instead of you know me saying that you know I went somewhere, I only went once, I would say I used to go. So I could be talking about a time period, like when I was younger, I used to go to the mall. Um, you know, I used to go to the park every day you know, when I was in high school, things like that. So you're referring to the past, but you're talking about something that you probably did more than one time. So that's a general rule of thumb. If you can uh, translate it in English to I used to, instead of just I did this thing one time, then that's the use of el imperfecto. But like I said, I would feel free to use it if you get stuck in conversation and you need it in a pinch. So let's look at some examples from the song, and then I'll talk about how easy it is that to start conjugating and using el imperfecto. All right, so uh, one of the first examples that we have is saltaba y reía. Saltaba y reía, which means I used to jump and I used to laugh. So saltar is the verb to jump, and saltaba is I used to jump. Reía comes from the verb reír, which is to laugh, and reía is I used to laugh. So it's also important to note that this is the same conjugation for usted, el, ella, and um, yeah, pretty much those three. <laughs> so you can use the same conjugation. So yo saltaba, I used to jump. El saltaba, he used to jump. Ella saltaba, she used to jump. Usted saltaba, you used to jump. Uh, so you really have them all covered with one conjugation. Uh, so again, very, very, very simple to use. And you may have noticed that uh, from the ending, it's a super easy pattern. So saltar is the verb. 
So it's a verb that ends in AR or AR. So we have uh, the saltar, instead of using the R, we're going to get rid of the R and we're going to replace it with a B and an A. Okay, so instead of saltar, it's saltaba, aba. So if you hear aba in at the end of a lot of words, then that's a clue that we're talking about the past tense. Something that happened with some frequency is el imperfecto. So if you hear aba, just that sound in Spanish, <laughs> know that it's probably an AR verb. Uh, that's an imperfect verb. Okay, another example using this song was cantaba. He said cantaba con alegría. Cantaba con alegría. So you should have picked up that this comes from the verb cantar, which means to sing. So I used to sing with joy. Cantaba, yo cantaba con alegría. So again, the verb cantar, we get rid of the R and we just add the ba sound. So instead of canta, it's cantaba. Or in this case, because it's the yo form, instead of canto, like in the present tense, yo canto, yo cantaba, I used to sing. So you can see how easy this is to conjugate. So think of some other AR verbs like estar. How do you think you would say I used to be? Estaba. Yo estaba. All right. And if you wanted to say the tú informal, you would just add an S at the end. So instead of uh, tú, est instead of yo estaba, it would be tú estabas. Tú estabas. So very, very easy. And we've already covered usted, el, ella. They're all the same as yo. So you've already covered, what, four subjects right there? <laughs> and you only learned one conjugation. I told you this was easy. So that is uh, just a taste of it. So there's another example in the song. He says, nadaba en el mar, nadaba en el mar. So that is, I used to swim from the verb nadar to swim, nadaba en el mar. I used to swim in the ocean. So that is just uh, covering AR verbs. Now, you may remember that I also mentioned in that first line is saltaba y reía, reía. Now this one's a little difficult because it comes from the verb reír, which is to laugh. But reír is a verb that ends in ir. So for any verbs that end in er or ir, it's actually the same conjugation. I told you this was easy. <laughs> so the, so, so reír becomes reía. So we're just replacing that ir or er for like uh, a verb that ends in er with ia. So you'll see an accent usually over the i uh, to indicate that that's where the stress is in the syllable. So that's what we're seeing here with Reír. Another example in the song is compartía. So he says, compartía momentos con amigos sinceros. Compartía momentos con amigos sinceros. So that is, I used to share. So compartía comes from the verb compartir, which is to share. So he's saying, I used to share moments with sincere friends, or with my real friends. Okay, amigos sinceros. So Compartía momentos is I used to share. So again, very easy. Compartir becomes compartía. Compartía. And remember, it's the same. If I wanted to say he used to share, I would say él compartía. All right? If I wanted to say María used to share, I would say María compartía. Very, very easy. So how would I say I used to feel? Now you might know to feel is the verb sentir, sentir. So if we follow this pattern, it is yo sentía, yo sentía, I used to feel. So again, very, very simple. And again, if I wanted to use this in um, the, the tense where I'm referring to, let's say, ella, I could say ella sentía, she used to feel. So this is a very simple one to learn. And again, I hope this gives you um, a little bit of hope here <laughs> that everything in Spanish doesn't have to be very, very difficult. Uh, I know that grammar can be daunting, but I will definitely encourage you that the more you become familiar with uh, the different grammar um, or different verb tenses in Spanish, that it will become easier and easier to use. So there's several examples here in the song. Um, again, for AR verbs, you're just going to replace that AR with ABA. For ER and IR verbs, you're just going to replace it with IA. So a couple more examples. 
Soñaba comes from the verb soñar, which is to dream. So soñaba means I used to dream. So I hope you have found this helpful. This is a short one today because it is really that easy <laughs> to, to conjugate el imperfecto. And I'm going to play the song for you again in a moment, just so that you can listen to see if you can hear that ava and the ia. Now ava is probably easier to identify because there really aren't other words that use that pattern. Ia is a little bit, you know, uh, more commonly used in the language, so it might be harder to distinguish. So I want you to listen out for those in particular uh, for the ER and IR verbs, but listen again also for those AR verbs because you'll start to hear it all the time. Now that you know what it means, you probably are going to be listening to songs, you're going to be listening to people talk, and you're going to hear this more and more, and you can also start using it right away. So instead of stressing out trying to remember, you know, which irregular verb in el pretérito indefinido that you need to use, just go ahead. <laughs> I give you permission. Use El Imperfecto. Someone's going to say you have bad grammar. But, you know, we don't want to hang out with people that are critiquing our grammar anyway, right? Unless it's in an educational situation. If they understand you, I think you're going to be good to go. So again, not the perfect solution, but definitely an easy way to get through a conversation if you find yourself confused and trying to remember and conjugate in your head. Try to just go for El Imperfecto in the past tense and you'll get through it, okay? And then when you have a session with a Spanish teacher or a coach, then you can work on perfecting your language. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Actually, at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned I'd give you an opportunity if you want to dive more into this and get better at using the past tense. Uh, we actually have a summer boot camp coming up starting at the beginning of June, where you'll have an opportunity for eight weeks to dive deep into this topic of which past tense verb to use and when, or which, which conjugation to use, right? Whether it's el pretérito or el imperfecto. We're going to dive into that in our summer boot camp. So if you're interested in signing up, go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash summer. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash summer, and that will give you access to our summer boot camp. Now, this will also sign you up to be a member of our Spanish Fluency Club. So you'll get all of the benefits of being in the Fluency Club, including the opportunity to participate in group conversation practice sessions at least once a week. We usually have a few different sessions running, um, so you'll be able to attend. And also, a lot of people ask us, well, how do I know if I should sign up? Will this meet my schedule? The truth is, once you sign up, we will match you with a group. Uh, that meets your schedule. So we ask you after you sign up for what days and times work best for you and we make sure we get you matched up with a group that uh, you can actually attend on a regular basis. So I don't want you to feel like, okay, I can't sign up because I've got vacation. Even if you miss one or two sessions, you're going to get the recordings as well. So if you want to improve your Spanish this summer, if you want to be able to practice Spanish with our friendly team of native Spanish speakers, and if you want to really master the past tense and know when to use which uh, which conjugation, then make sure you sign up for the boot camp. We're only going to have doors open until Sunday, so if you're listening to this, please make sure you sign up, SpanishConSalsa.com slash summer. If you're listening to this after this Sunday, uh, then make sure that you go to our website, SpanishConSalsa.com slash join, so that you can sign up on the wait list. Uh, so that you'll know when we open the doors again to the Spanish Fluency Club because we're always working on grammar, but in a conversational way so that you can begin to master it and not just sit there learning verb charts, okay? We have to start using it in conversation. So if you want to check that out again, SpanishConSalsa.com slash summer, make sure you sign up right away. We have limited spaces available, but we wanted to invite you in. If you don't have anything much going on this summer, I know a lot of people take summer as a break, but it's also the perfect time to learn because you probably have a break from other things. Maybe you're going to have some time on vacation. Maybe you're even going to visit a Spanish speaking country. So now's a great time to buckle down, get some practice in, work on one thing. Let's just focus on nailing this past tense for right now and getting some regular conversation practice. And then once the fall comes, we'll have some more structured programs for you to be, to, for you to be a part of. Uh, when we open the doors to the Spanish Fluency Club again, but this is your backdoor in. So this is your way of getting into the Fluency Club during the summer and getting a good eight week uh, jump start on your Spanish before fall. So that is it for this episode. I'm going to play the song one more time as we go out, but uh, I'm just going to let that play. And that's going to be the last thing you hear for this episode. And let me know what you think of this. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if it's been useful. As always, I hope that something you've heard in this episode has taken you one step closer from Spanish beginner to bilingual. Hasta la próxima. Ay, es que te ves hoy creciendo, saltaba y reía. Mi 
corazón cantando Comparse y directo sincero Cantaba con alegría Mi corazón cantando I used to jump and laugh My heart singing con Compartía momentos con amigos sinceros I used to share moments with true friends Cantaba con alegría Sin motivo y sin dinero I used to sing with joy And without money Pasiones llena, se llamaba despierta bajo las estrellas brillantes. Caminaba las calles sin rumbo, sin distantes. I used to walk the streets in the street without distances. Vivimos latino, baila conmigo. I like to I used to calor, vive el amigo. Aprende el idioma. For listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com.